I am Distant Coder. I am a Yu-Gi-Oh streamer over on Twitch, and I'm also a Yu-Gi-Oh content creator over on YouTube. Yu-Gi-Oh being a game that's extremely complicated, I am the kind of person who really likes to dive deep into like the intricacies of games, knowing all, you know, all the little details about games and educating other people about it. So the majority of the content that I make is going to be about Yu-Gi-Oh rulings, card interactions, and stuff like that, because Yu-Gi-Oh is a very complicated card game, and different cards interact with each other very differently in unique ways, and not everyone is super familiar with all the different interactions so I try to make content to break it down and make it more digestible for people to learn more about the game in a simple way. I've been playing a lot of video games since I was a kid. Like, I remember when I was around, like, four or five years old, I had my, my brother's Game Boy Color with Pokemon Red, and that's where I had my my beginning uh, as a gamer. Otherwise, I played a lot of uh, Kingdom Hearts growing up because we had a PlayStation 2 at my place. Or, like, even in high school, like, I would bring my laptop to school and I would just, like, game on school breaks and stuff like that. It really, I think, took off when I started to play Overwatch when that released, and I think that was really what took me from being, you know, like, a casual gamer to wanting to do it a lot more and a lot more more, you know, seriously and stuff like that. So I, I enjoyed Overwatch a lot. I know life to that game quite a bit. I'd played Overwatch on the PS4 and I'd made friends with on Overwatch on PS4 and they said, hey, we're going to be swapping over to PC soon because I'm getting my new PC. My friend has his PC. And uh, at some point there was a buddy of mine who I played Overwatch with very regularly who he would stream to like, you know, three, four people. And he says, yeah, I enjoy streaming and I would watch his stream a lot. And I thought it was very entertaining. And he says, you have the personality, the, the you know, the kind of personality that people want to watch stream so I think you should give it a try I think you should stream at that time I was pretty invested into Yu-Gi-Oh because I played the game quite a lot like in person and I was like fuck it I'll give it a try and then it really took off from there so the thing with the Yu-Gi-Oh community, and I've always said this, I feel like streaming Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of a fast pass to like Twitch partnership and stuff like that. Because the thing with the Yu-Gi-Oh community is that the Yu-Gi-Oh community is very big and very dedicated. Like if you take my audience on any given day, like I stream to a, an average of like 1200 viewers or something like that every day, I can guarantee you that like 80% only consume Yu-Gi-Oh content. They don't watch your XQCs, your Asmongold, your Mizkifs, anything like that. The bigger names on Twitch are not regular Twitch viewers, they're specifically Yu-Gi-Oh viewers on Twitch. So there's a really big community and an extremely small streamer base. There's not that many Yu-Gi-Oh streamers that do this consistently, regularly, every single day. And at the time I was working a, a full-time job at a casino as a dealer. In between that, I was streaming almost every single day that I could because I wanted to grow that following. Following. And this community being as dedicated as it was really showed up and from that point on it just kind of like took off I also got a little bit of help from uh, some other big content creators in the Yu-Gi-Oh space notably the the biggest name in the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Twitch community of uh, Farfa was was became a good friend of mine and he would host me quite a bit and whatever and he'd, he'd help me grow my channel as well I, I wouldn't attribute like my success and everything to simply host and stuff like that because you also have to work really hard on your end for it so I think it was a, a mix of being kind of lucky and also pouring a lot of my time into it that really, you know, caused me to grow to the rate that I did. That would be about three and a half years ago. The way I went about joining Lazarus actually was I had a viewer of mine reach out to me and he says, look, Coder, I really love your content. I love what you do. He works as a recruiter for an esports org. He said his org wasn't recruiting right now, but his basically primary job is he helps players get recruited by either his org or other orgs or whatever. And I'd like to help you, you know, build up like a good, you know, deck to like present to people and stuff like that and possibly get recruited by an esports orcs. I think it'd be a really beneficial to you. And I said, yeah, I really like the idea. He said that one of the one one of the ones that would probably suit me the best is Lazarus, considering that I'm Canadian. They're the first Canadian esports org and stuff like that. This feels like like a, a good fit. I sent it out next. I felt extremely nervous. And then when they were like, yeah, we're actually down. Like, let's talk. Let's get an interview going. I was like, this is crazy. I'm so excited. You know, Charlie and Munster, who were the ones that interviewed me and everything, like that it felt like their entire goal was to help me as a creator more so than anything else and that made me feel very much at home I get this question asked a lot because like when I go to like events and stuff like that, a lot of people come up to me and go, hey, I'm an aspiring YouTuber. I'm an aspiring streamer. Like, do you have any any recommendations or tips for me and stuff like that? I think the first thing that any content creator should do, be it YouTuber or Twitch, is to buy a good microphone. Ain't nobody want to watch someone that sounds like they're taking your drive through order at McDonald's. Like it's just it doesn't sound good. No one wants to watch that. And then 
consistency is the key. The big thing with growing on Twitch is that it's a lot easier to grow on Twitch if you either have already grown on YouTube or grow on YouTube alongside Twitch. Growing on Twitch by itself is so insanely difficult. I was just insanely lazy with YouTube. I was posting a video every like two weeks or something like that. I think that was a big mistake on my part. I really think I should have pushed it on the YouTube a lot more because growing on YouTube means you also grow on Twitch. Some people try to grow, but they'll only go live for like an hour and a half. And like, I get it. Some people don't have the time to invest into it. And if you don't have the time to invest yeah. into it, you shouldn't expect it to grow too much. But if you have that time to invest and you want to see it grow, invest the time. Even if you stream like an, an extra hour and a half and you feel like nothing came of it, maybe like there's four different people that stop by your channel and give you a follow and at the beginning that means the difference you know pre-stream not necessarily i think the only like preparation i do for streams and stuff like that is if i'm doing like a specific thing on stream like sometimes i'll um i'll do like certain game shows and stuff like that like i i've done a, a couple of game shows where it's like kind of like a replica of like deal or no deal or something like that or i did this like one quiz with other content creators and i have another content creator on and do like a Yu-Gi-Oh quiz and stuff like that it sometimes feels really good to go into stream knowing exactly what you're gonna do everything is prepared and it's kind of like like a show but i feel like having those like streams where you just go live not really knowing what you're doing and you just ride the wave also feels really good and feels very relaxing in my opinion but after stream my my post stream ritual is i'll turn off stream i'll pop up someone else's stream watch that for about half an hour while i go over my vod and i start yoinking clips for going up on youtube as soon as i'm done stream it doesn't mean that i am done working when i'm done stream i move on to the youtube portion of my work now i i just recently hired a full-time editor for my channel which is very very helpful and that's one thing that i will say i'll go back to that whole like tips for people and stuff like that if you get to a point where like your audience starts to grow a little bit more and you want to do more youtube stuff get an editor it is so fucking important to get an editor. When I started, I was hiring an editor and paying him more than my YouTube was making me because I felt like it was an investment into my own growth and it was absolutely worth it. That's a funny one, actually. Uh, I don't code. A lot of people ask me. I bought my first laptop and I wanted to play Dark Souls on it. And to play Dark Souls, you need a Games for Windows Live account. You can either pay for like a premium account and you can make your own name or you can get a free account and they give you an automatically generated name. So they automatically yeah. generated Distant Coder 17 and it just stuck. I think my best gaming memory was when I had a feature match at a Yu-Gi-Oh! YCS. So this is like an in-person in -person tournament. Every single round at a YCS, they'll grab two players and they'll put them on the stream and you play on stream. I had one time when I was at a YCS in Utrecht in the Netherlands in 2020, right before COVID, I had a feature match. I rolled my opponent like it was not even a close game it felt really cool because at the time like my whole audience was in that twitch chat and when i went back and watched the vod with the twitch chat like to see the chat just spamming my emotes and everything like that while i was completely destroying this dude on the live stream it felt so cool i was like wait this is such a dope moment and that was like probably one of my best gaming memories because to this day like i'll go back and watch that video every now and then i'll show it on stream like every now and then just because it like it's That's such a good sweet. memory unless you consider like because I, I i collect retro video games i collect them it is related to gaming but i i, I collect a lot of retro video games like i have a, a big nintendo 64 game collection i got gamecube stuff and like yeah it is a gaming related hobby but it's more so something that i do because i enjoy having these like bits and pieces of my childhood and and you know gaming history around me and it's also really cool because when i have my friends over we have all sorts of like really cool multiplayer games to play because nowadays it's very rare that companies will release you know like a, a two-player game or a four-player game or something that you just play with friends uh, with the exception of like every other mario party that releases you know i have a couple of like really good castlevania games on ps1 i got symphony of the night and stuff like that like some of the those are like the the more sought after games like people you know talk about a lot i got fire emblem on the gamecube which is like one of the games that is like the most expensive on gamecube so i i do dig for those like really sought after games i think it's a really cool thing to own you know Kingdom Hearts on the PS2, if that counts. Probably the Nintendo 64. Least favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card is probably Altergeist Meluseek. Uh, Rescue Rabbit. <laughs> 
It's literally in the case on my phone. Hold up, right here. Oh, Boom! Really? There it is. I got it in French nice. in the highest rarity. It's like a $90 card or something like that. I have it in my phone nice. because I love it so much. <laughs> Friends. I've watched it like seven times. Mm -hmm. My favorite artist yeah. is Eminem. My favorite band is System of a Down. Ice cream. I love ice cream despite the fact that I'm lactose intolerant. I tank it. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever pizza place is open at three in the morning. That's the best pizza place. <laughs> this is going to be a controversial one, all right? Because I went, to, I went to LA once and I had Jack in the Box one time. Everyone says it's dog shit, but I remember it being freaking insane. Canute. Canute's really hot. I do. I have five tattoos. I have a Lucario on my arm. I have two Kingdom Hearts tattoos on my left hand. I have an Ash Blossom, which is a, another Yu-Gi-Oh card on my uh, elbow, which is actually an emote of mine. This is like a, a rendition of one of my emotes. And I have the words Solid Rocks tattooed on my neck, which is probably the one that has the most meaning because Solid Rocks was a really, really old meme on my uh, um, Twitch channel in a deck profile where I was like showing people the deck that I played and, and how it worked and everything. Like I said, Said, this deck is really solid but the deck is full of like rock monsters so i turned to my friend marco and i said you get it marco solid rocks brother and it became like a big meme in my channel so i got the word solid rocks tattooed on my neck when i was on a, on a trip at uh at that ycs in utrecht actually in 2020. I am currently working on a really cool rebrand. A lot of things are going to be changing on my channel. New logo, new everything, new shows, old shows coming back, stuff like that. Uh, some new merch is going to be coming out and everything. This has all been in the works for upwards of six months right now. I hired all sorts of different people to do all sorts of different things for this. And it's all getting to the final product really soon. Hopefully I can release it by the end of this month or by like the beginning of next month or something like that. That is what I'm aiming for. If it takes a little bit more time, that'll be what it'll be but uh i am currently working on that and this whole big revamp of the channel revamp of the content and it's going to feel very new and fresh and, and big you know so I stream on twitch.tv slash distantcoder. I also have my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash distantcoder. Uh, the social that I tend to use the most is Twitter. So at the distantcoder is my uh, handle on Twitter. And I also have my Discord community, which is also very welcoming to new people trying to learn about Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff like that, which is uh, discord.gg slash rc0. That's like a meme in my yeah. channel because for Konami, if you're a judge with them, you have the uh, ruling comprehension test one and two. So your rc1 or RC2. I have neither because I, I haven't done them, so I'm RC0 and that's the joke. <laughs> I owe it to the community and to, you know, the whole Yu-Gi-Oh family where I'm at. You know, I owe it to them and without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So huge shout out to you guys. You guys allow me to get to live my dream of uh, being uh, in my basement uh, 25 hours a day and, and that's it.